Hey guys, in this Anime Studio tutorial, I show you how to export your animations. When working on an animation, it's a safe bet to assume that at some point you're going to want to render out the animation, whether that is to share it with the world, share it with your friends, or maybe you just want to preview the animation to see what it looks like in full motion. Well, we can easily do this by exporting the animation in Anime Studio. Now, one thing to point out, when you go to File, Save, and you save the file, you're saving it as a project file, meaning you're saving this so that you can open it up in Anime Studio later on and edit the file so that you can open it up later on and edit the file or reference to it or grab things from the file. This is not an ideal way to share your work in a video format. In order to share your work so that others can view it as a movie, you want to export animation. Now when you select this option, you have a variety of different choices here. First is the start and end frame. If, for instance, you want your animation to not start at frame 1 and end on the frame, that your animation ends on on the timeline, you can adjust these parameters accordingly. So let's say for instance you wanted your animation to start a second later, but let's say within that first second there's just nothing there that you want. You can come down here to your timeline and reference that one second starts at frame 24. So then you could type in frame 24 accordingly on the start frame and then your animation would start rendering from that point. And the same can be done with the end frame. If you want your entire animation to be rendered out, you can always select entire animation and that will default it to render out your entire timeline that you have um, determined prior to going to export animation. Next, you have the output format. Here, you have the ability to export your movie as either an image sequence using a variety of different formats, a movie clip, or a flash file. So for instance, if you select JPEG, bitmap, or any of the other image files, you will export right now, in this example, 120 different images. Because what this will do is it will export an image for every single frame you have on your timeline. What you can then do is take all of those images into a program like After Effects and compile them into a movie clip. So that might be something you want to do. It just depends on your methods of editing. Next, you have the AVI and QuickTime formats. Now, typically when I'm um, working on my own projects, I typically 99% of the time choose QuickTime. I don't use AVI that much. QuickTime just seems to do a better job for me. And finally you have Flash, SWF. Now this is Flash's, Adobe Flash's default way of rendering animations. This is if you want to display your animation, embed it on a web page, let's say on your own website, and you don't want to put it on a place like YouTube. Another example, Places like Newgrounds accepts SWFs as a way for you to submit your work. So basically, SWF is used for internet media that is not video. So for this example, let's choose QuickTime because I'm going to assume most of you want to export your animations from Anime Studio to places like YouTube or other similar venues. So the next step is to choose the render quality options. The first option allows you to render out your edges to be smooth. If you deselect this, they will be rough looking. Apply shape effects. This is if you applied gradients or light effects or glow effects to your shapes. If you deselect this, those will not render out in your movie. Same with layer effects. If you applied any layer effects like line type layer effects, or if you apply a glow to your layer, if you deselect this, those will not be displayed. Render at half dimensions. This will cut your dimensions in half. What this would be good for is if you're making an SWF and you want to reduce the file size, or I guess a video as well, 
or if you want to just have a preview for yourself. If you just want to quickly preview this animation, you may want to cut the dimensions in half. That way it will save time on rendering. Same goes with the render at half frame rate. This will skip every other frame on your animation to produce a video. This will cut down on the file size, which may be an advantage to you, but it will also give you a way to quickly display a preview. And the same goes with reduced particles. It will just reduce the number of particles you may have on your animation so that you can get a smaller file size. Extra smooth images, which just implies your images will be extra smooth. NTSC save colors. This is if you are going to export your animation for a TV monitor. Now this will help in the process when it comes to making your colors safe for TV monitors, but you may want to do some research as well to make sure that your colors that you selected are manually inputted to be NTSC safe. This option is for if you plan to composite your animations in a video editing software. And multi-threaded rendering allows you to render something out quicker, basically. So I would leave that checked. Once you have all your options set, click OK. Now the next thing is you're going to have to find a place to put your video file. So you can browse to find a place. And once you do that, click Save. And now comes the compression type. Now this might be different if you are using an AVI, but since I recommend QuickTime, I'm going to stick with that. Now for the compression type, I have the most luck out of animation. That's the one I typically use because what I do is I bring this into my video editing software. And once I'm done, I then compress the entire animation into H.264 for internet viewing but that's just how I do my workflow. But for best results, I would recommend something like animation. And for your motion, I um, animated my cartoon at 24 frames per second, so I will leave it at that, as well as keyframe every 24 frames. When you want the best results, make sure you choose millions of colors plus, because that will, of course, bring in the most colors possible. And for the best results, make sure your quality is set to best. And once you've done this, you click OK, and your animation will start to render. Now you'll notice when it starts to render, it will bring in all those effects if you, of course, dictated to bring them in. So you can see I have my lighting effects as well as my gradient in the background. And you'll see that the multi-thread rendering is working and that you have basically a meteor here displaying how long it takes to render. So I'll stop the video and I'll come back once this is done rendering. Okay, my video is now done rendering and I have it up here in my Windows Explorer. And as you can see, it's right here. So I'll just right click and choose to open it in QuickTime since I made it a QuickTime file. And here it is and I can just play it and we can see it play out. And that's it, it worked. If you're having any issues, like for instance, if the video doesn't look good, if you have pixelization or other issues occurring, just go back into your compression settings and play around with them. Make sure that your quality is set to high, make sure your colors are set to millions of colors plus, and just try different compression settings. Sometimes the animation codec for me doesn't work 100% of the time, so sometimes I need to adjust those settings. So be sure you go back and look at those. So anyway, that is how you export an animation. So be sure you post your animations on YouTube or other places because I would like to see them and I'm sure others would as well. So be sure you do that. And I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time.